In this tutorial video, I will explain how to add bridges and barriers to maps. Uh, bridges are game objects or you know sections of map where players cannot pass through, but uh, bullets and objectives and specific uh, other game objects do pass through. Uh, and they're you know, useful for connecting specific areas of the map, for instance, having two solid pieces of terrain and you know, connecting them with a bridge element. So play players can pass over, but they will be exposed to uh, uh, bullets, for instance. Uh, so yeah, they, they're, they're an important uh, element of, uh, of, of maps. And then secondly, I will explain how to add barriers. And barriers are uh, pretty much the, the opposite. They allow player, players to pass through, but they don't allow bullets to pass through. And so, yeah, that's the, the general idea of a barrier in Ninja.io. Um, so let's get started. Let me first add uh, a section of map just to be able to test uh, these uh, two features, or rather to demonstrate the functionality. So I selected the triangulation tool, and I will quickly add some piece of land. And... I will select this piece and let me call it G1 for ground one. And then let me give it a nice little terrain color like so. And then let's colorize it a bit further. Just, you know, to make it a bit more interesting for this test. It doesn't really matter much, but also a little trick. Sometimes you can make a... a make the mesh uh, look like it has a little bit of depth to it simply by uh, stretching the inner parts like the inner vertices uh, to make it look like uh, there's some some uh, somewhat of a bevel uh, effect going on okay so now we have a little section of ground and the next thing i want to explain is how to uh, mirror such a piece so oftentimes you will want to uh, copy uh, an area of the map and then mirror it for instance uh, when you want to connect two uh, sections of map via a bridge but you want both of them to kind of look identical um, which might be useful in uh, certain game modes like uh, capture the flag or uh, team that match uh, so instead of having to recreate this thing twice uh, you select a copy tool and then you just copy the section of map and then while it's still selected you press the control key and the shift key and then you click anywhere in the mesh to flip the mesh so now you have uh, now you have an identical section flipped over so now we have a nice little uh, piece of terrain to test uh, bridge sections so now it's important to pay attention uh, to the z index we have here Z index 600. Uh, for, we want the, the bridge that we're going to build to disappear a little bit behind the terrain and not be on top of the terrain, if that makes sense. So what we'll do next is uh, we're going to select the triangulation tool again. And we're going to already make life easy for ourselves by uh, selecting a mesh group, BR1 for bridge 1, so that when we start triangulating the bridge it will automatically be assigned the uh, mesh group id that we just entered so let's start triangulating the bridge is going to run between these pieces of terrain like so i'm going to make it a bit messy but you know it's all about the general uh, idea so okay I imagine i'm satisfied with this shape and then i click and as you can see, it has triangulated a new section of map with mesh group ID BR1. Next up, we want to edit this mesh. We, we want to forget about the terrain for a while. So we just want to work with BR1. And instead of doing the regular mesh select here, we now click the checkbox here and then enter BR1, the bridge that we uh, just created. We press enter. And as you can see, the terrain has now vanished into the background. Uh, and it will not be selectable. So this allows us to easily work with just this piece of uh, this section of bridge that we're you know, that we're currently editing. Uh, and I'll select the deletion tool because, as you can see, 
it always creates a uh, convex shape and we want the bridge to have a bit of a concave uh, shape so we delete these super superfluous uh, sections of bridge okay so i'm happy with that uh, i pick the select tool i select the bridge or again i can just uh, go and do br1 and i can just edit the bridge and i'll select a texture that i want this bridge to have for instance uh, i wanted to have a kind of a wood look like this and now uh, importantly uh, as i explained earlier i want this to i want the bridge to kind of disappear behind the terrain which means i wanted to have a lower z index than the terrain by default anything we add to the editor has a z index of 600 um, but for instance we want to have the bridge uh, be, we want the bridge to appear behind the terrain so let's give it a lower z index of let's say 500 um, and here i can see now that there is still another section of triangle that i don't want so i'm going to delete it okay so now we are at z index z index 500 and next up we want to change the physics of this bridge so the bridge uh, a bridge is different from solid terrain um, so we select the bridge category and this will be make the these uh, you know these triangles or, or rather this mesh uh, behave like a bridge and then finally we want to maybe add some shadow to the bottom of the bridge just to make it look a bit more interesting it's not really important for uh, this video right now so this should now behave like a bridge let's unselect and now we press the Z to force the Z index. And as you can see, the bridge disappears nicely behind these uh, rocks. And let's uh, quickly test if uh, this works as we, uh, as we expect it to. So let's add a player spawn. And the player will spawn right over the bridge. File, test in-game, and let's test that match mode. And here we are. And as you can see, it appears to behave like a solid terrain, but as you can see, we can shoot right through it. So the player can walk on top of it, but we can shoot right through it. Now, one thing you might notice is that right now the player actually appears in front of the bridge. And this doesn't look very nice. And the bullets also appear in front of it. Uh, so the bridge appears behind terrain, but it is also behind the player and this is usually not desirable so let me quickly explain how to fix that so we have this mesh which is ground one and we want to bring it for forward a bit more so we select ground one and we make it z index 700 and then we go and select the bridge which was br1 and we turn that into 600 so anything of, with the Z index 600 or higher will actually appear in front of players. So let's test it again. That match. Okay. And what should happen now is that uh, it should actually appear in front of play the player. So as you can see, this is you know this is better. This is what we wanted. Also, bullets uh, vanish behind uh, the bridge. Uh, another thing you can notice is a small detail, but uh, when you fire the gun, the little particles that uh, appear, uh, and this also applies to other types of particles, not just the uh, bullet uh, casings, they will bounce, they will collide with and bounce on solid terrain, but they will f fall straight through bridge sections. So this is just another uh, distinguishing feature of bridges. So. Obviously, this bridge looks uh, super ugly. Uh, this is just a quick uh, demonstration, but you know that's uh, that's how you add a bridge, and that's how you can uh, edit uh, a bridge. Um, and now let's add a barrier on one side of the bridge. And for this, uh, this is a slightly different procedure. So first, we add a empty game object, and then uh, rather than what we usually do. We, in this case, we actually want uh, the, the graphic not to fill whatever shape we're going to put in this game object. 
So we're just going to kind of want to put an image there and nothing more and nothing more initially. So we go to texture and then we go to scenery and then we select uh, one of the barriers. And as you can see, nothing is visible yet uh, because right now it tries to fill any polygon that is there, but there is no polygon. So we turn off polyfill and as you can see, the, bar the barrier appears. Um, now this barrier is still a little bit oversized. So what we can do next is go back to the, the graphics panel and then scale it down a bit. For instance, we want to make it only half the size of what it was, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So, and then we position it roughly where we want it to be. And as you can see, this has Z index 600, so it will appear, uh, appear behind the terrain, which is generally what you want for a barrier. But it, it depends on what you what you like, and let's give it a bit more of a you know sandy color that just generally looks a bit nicer. Okay, so that looks good. Um, and maybe you want it to be a little bit uh, flatter than this because you want kind of want players to be able to hide behind it, but not be completely obscured behind it. Um, so we make the Z scale a little bit. Uh, a little bit smaller than that. Okay, so I, I guess that's good enough. And then you can also easily rotate it by holding the Alt key and then selecting it and dragging the mouse. So right now I'm holding the Alt key while I'm rotating the object. So just make it to make it a little bit equal with terrain. Or perhaps you want it on sloping terrain like this. Might be nicer to demonstrate like that. So we put our barrier here. And obviously this is just an image. So this is not going to do anything except just sit there and we can walk, uh, we can hide behind it. But bullets will still pass straight through. It's just an image, it doesn't do anything else. Uh, so next up we want to add some bullet colliders. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go to the physics panel. And then while we have this game object selected, we're going to add a polygon. And as you can see, now a triangle has been added. And then we want to make sure that the category of this polygon is actually a barrier. So there's two ways to do this. You can generally change the physics of all the shapes inside of a, a game object by changing the category in the physics panel. Or you can select a particular shape and then it will open the shape panel. And then inside the shape panel, you can change the category. Uh, for instance, we want uh, it to be a barrier. So we select a barrier category. And it's important to realize that this triangle is now a barrier. So this triangle will block any bullets, but it will still allow the player to pass through. So let's uh, make this triangle actually match our barrier. So what we want to do is make it a little bit, uh, make it block bullets only on the edge of the barrier. And this way, anyone shooting at a player from outside, uh, those bullets will be blocked. But uh, you don't want it to completely cover this terrain because someone shooting from uh, from the top should still be able to damage the player. So in this case, bullets will only be blocked from this side, but from the top they will not. Um, so when you're satisfied with this shape, uh, you actually realize, hey, I, I want this to be working from uh, both sides. So what we want to do next is uh, add another polygon. And then this one we will move to the left side of this barrier. And remember, these these polygons are actually both inside the same game object. So we add this one, and then we go to the shape panel again, make sure that it's a barrier, then go to the select tool, and you can see we can select the entire game object and move it around, so we can move our barrier around. And conveniently, we can also copy it. So if we want multiple barriers, and we can also mirror it, but keep in mind it will only mirror the physics objects. If you want to actually mirror the, the barrier itself, you have to go to the graphics panel and then give it a negative scale, like minus 0 0.5. This will flip the barrier. So we have one barrier and we have another one. And we put it here. And then we put this one here. And let's test. See if our barriers uh, work as expected. So we select uh, any random weapon. And then, as you can see, it's blocking our bullets, but we can still walk through. So this is exactly how we want our barrier to behave. 
And we can also test this by, uh, you know, spawning a bot. I have a convenient command for that, but uh, you can also add a bot spawn element to the map. Uh, so you can see the bot doesn't get hit. And also not from this side, but you should definitely be able to hit it from the top. See, so that behaves as expected. And as you can see, the bot falls straight through the bridge section, but uh, you know the item uh, rests on it. Uh, so that's exactly what we wanted. So, yeah, that's basically how uh, barriers uh, work and how bridges work. And you can make this as intricate as you want, and there's no reason why you should just limit yourself to the, this basic example that I just gave. So go ahead and play around, and I hope this clarifies uh, these basics a little bit for you. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next video.